All right, welcome everybody. This is the first uh, Alumni 24 Speed retro screening. Um, so we're glad you're all here. 24 Speed is an annual filmmaking competition from the College of William & Mary, for those who don't know, where teams of students and alumni have 24 hours to write, shoot, and edit a movie, or a short film, and then compete for awards from a panel of judges and the audience. So at 7 p.m. on a Friday night, teams receive a prop, a line of dialogue, and a choice of two rather offbeat genres. Um, some examples of those genres include religious film, political film, women, um, actuality, which uh, I think we had to look up when we got that one. And you have until the teams have until 7 p.m. on Saturday to turn it in. Um, so if you've watched um, some behind the scenes videos or worked on a film, you probably know that a lot of meticulous planning goes into filmmaking. A single shot can take hours to prepare and shoot. It can be weeks or months of planning to set up a shoot. 24 Speed is not like that. This is a manic dash that is all done in a single day. Madness frequently yeah, madness frequently ensues and absurdity tends to reign, but it is a kick in the pants like no other. Um, and the beautiful thing is that at the end of the day, teams have made a short film from beginning to end and you are now part of a group of a rather gonzo tribe of filmmakers. Um, just as an example, one of tonight's films is called Exploding Dicks. Um, you have Zan to thank for that and his team. Um, the 24 speed comp competition has been going on since 2005 and alumni 24 speed has just passed its 24. Oops, sorry, I'm hearing my voice. Uh, just passed its 24, its 10th anniversary last year in 2021. Um, this was, the festival was created by Professor Sharon Zuber with help from Adam Stackhouse and supported for years by Troy Davis of the Charles Reeder Media Center in the basement of Swam Library. Um, this is one of the first ways I got into filmmaking when I was a student at the college. And so we're happy to share this little bit of wild energy with you tonight. And now I'd like to kick it to our panel of filmmakers to introduce themselves. Um, Zan, if you wanna go first. All right, so yeah, I'm uh, Zan Gillies. Yes, I made the one that's called Exploding Dicks. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I actually looked up and I found the original script uh, that we uh, originally wrote on there and literally it's titled I'm sorry that's it, it was that was the original title of this film. Um, uh, yeah I'm a filmmaker uh, based out of Virginia. Um, I live in Stanton, Virginia and um, I was a William & Mary 09 graduate and now I work as a uh, just kind of a general filmmaker -y dude. I'm a shooter and an editor. Um, I'm producing a docu-series for Virginia Public Media right now um, and uh, writer, screenwriter and, um, and producer of other various short and feature films. Um, all, that, all that fun stuff. Uh, Matt, if you would like to introduce yourself. Sure, thanks, Ted. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Matthew Sonnenfeld. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I am a uh, fourth year super senior uh, in the theater management program at Yale School of Drama. Um, and I uh, graduated from William & Mary in 2012. Um, tonight, we will be showing um, Making Love, which um, was crazy and weird and the coldest night of the year um it was uh uh if, if hell had frozen over um that would have been that shoot but it was so much fun um uh, and uh it's great to be back with this group i miss you all great to see you yeah it's good to have you back uh aaron if you could introduce yourself uh yep yeah, i'm aaron thigpen i graduated in 2013 um i did my first 24 speed as a student, as a senior, and I think I've participated every year, except for one since then. So that's cool. Um, it's very fun. Um, in my day job, I don't really do anything with film. I work in analytics. Um, so this is like a really fun thing to do every year. And um, yeah, it's I enjoy it. <laughs> and reconnecting with everyone is fun every year, so. We're happy to have you. Um, Sarah, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Sarah Coffey. I graduated in 2015. Um, I actually did a chemistry major and film minor. And um, since then, I just finished actually in August, my master's of uh, biomedical sciences. And 
in the meantime, for fun, I've been making films uh, and I started the contest uh, when I was a student and um, I did it every year except for the years abroad. And then I've been doing it every year as an alumni. Um, and it's definitely something I look forward to every year because it's like the one time I can um, convince my friends and myself to take time to make a film. Um, outside of, I do also the local film festival, I do their like equivalent contest. Um, but yeah, I've just really enjoyed doing it every year. and. Um, like my friend Amelia's here and like she moved away actually but it's like the one time that we get together and like she films her part and like I put together and um it's just been a lot of fun so thanks for being here uh Ben if you could introduce yourself hello thank you for having me on this TED and everybody I'm Ben Fox uh, I graduated in 2019 uh and I did 24 speed every year that I was a student at William and Mary starting in freshman year after that ended up getting a job at the media center and was totally uh, just enamored with that whole space for my uh, my entire tenure at William & Mary. And it was really fun being around all that creativity. Um, yeah, this uh, this film was, uh, the work screening tonight was the one we did in 2020, um, right before COVID hit. And so it was like, ended up being like a really interesting moment where I got to um, like, reconnect with some friends who I hadn't seen in a while right before everything kind of shut down which was really great and I've I try every year to keep doing it and I will until <laughs> I just physically cannot anymore because I love the mad dash <laughs> thanks for being here yeah. um all right and now we have a couple notes from people who couldn't make it so first up from Brian Terrell from the class of 2012 Brian Terrell is pursuing an MA in film and media production from American University He's taught with Fairfax Collegiate for eight years, leading summer and after school tech classes throughout the Northern Virginia area. Curricula Brian has developed include topics such as Minecraft modding, Raspberry Pi computing, virtual reality, and drones. As a videographer, Brian has primarily covered sports and events in the DC area. He regularly volunteers at Fairfax Ac Public Access Television, reproduces and hosts Count Gauntley's Horrors from the Public Domain. Brian has participated in 24 Speed since 2011 and an alumni team since 2013. And then we also have Loretta Prevost from the class of 2005. Loretta has been working as a cinematographer for 17 years on narrative and documentary projects. Her work has screened at festivals and on channels you've heard of. Loretta occasionally directs and occasionally writes for film magazines. Her filmmaking partner on this project was Jamie Northrup, steady cam operator in the big time, stunt person and stunt person provider extraordinaire, and creator of an app that reminds you to do push-ups. Loretta appreciates the opportunity 24 Speed presents to make low stakes, high pressure, funky, arty films with friends and strangers. And with that, let's kick off this screening. Um, if you have any questions during the screening, we encourage you to put them in the chat and we will answer them after. And then we'll also do a Q&A with all of our panelists. Waldism is more complicated than it seems. There are many, many different ways of being a Waldist. We're all finding Waldo. Let us cast aside our differences. Have you found Waldo yet? With over 2,012 different denominations of Waldist, you'd think we would have. Now, I know we've had a lot of strife in our past, but that's because we worship in so many different ways. The goal of today's summit is to alleviate the conflict between the different denominations. People took it and ran with it and just, you know, it went a little crazy. What do they wear? Not real stripes. These are real stripes. I don't see him any of these pages. Is he really here? When you don't know where he is and you haven't found him yet, he could be anywhere. And that's just amazing. We're all lost in a way until we find these books. And when we find the books, we find Waldo. I would hope that the the members of Waldism will be able to come together today. Where is he? He's specifically right here. There's someone there a little bit, huh? No, 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 no. Waldo's got me. Where is he? Oh, is that so? Yeah. Where? Where is he? We need a lot work out. We see him, but he's also everywhere. If you don't believe in the great good Waldo up high, what do you believe? So are your favorite texts? I'd probably say all of them. Yeah, mine too. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a sucker. Who could that be? 
Pardon me? May is, I help you? Is there perhaps room for one more? I have a ticket. These are movie tickets. What? Get out of here, you spawn of odd law! I came here hoping I would find some people just like me. But because I chose to follow odd law, the mirror opposite of Waldo, they threw me out like a piece of trash. God, that Good guy really Lord. pisses me off. Now, my fellow Wallists, I have a special guest for us all tonight. He is a scripture expert on anything Waldo. His name is Marty. Marty. I'm Marty Hanford. Um, normally I speak to bigger groups, but I'd be happy to tell you a little bit about my career. My publisher asked me, hey, do you want to do a series? So I came up with the fictional character, Waldo, and I started writing wait, my... Wait, fiction? Wait, wait. Fictional? What's your last name? Hanford. Martin Hanford? Martin Hanford? Mar That's the... THE Martin Hanford?! I, I created the Where is Waldo series and the Waldo character. This is the word of God! What you speak is wait. blasphemy! What's this man who talks to you against our religion, this I... is, this is lies! We cannot tolerate these words. Let's get him! What, what, what's going on? No! Oh, 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 I hate him! Oh, 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 get him, get him! Get him! Uh, uh. <laughs> Blasphemer! It's done. If there's no Waldo, then what do we do now? He lives on. In here. If Waldo lives only in the pages of fiction, then so must we. But I was right here. I was fucking robbed. They cheated, plain and simple. Explain. There was more votes than there was voters. They stuffed the ballot box. Listen, you know who I am. You think that the Blasio campaign sunk itself? What is this, 11 months from now? Who gives a shit? This is personal. Listen, I can give you 30 large for a win. 42. We'll be in touch. And in an amazing turn of events, the winner of the William & Mary 24 Speed Film Festival is... Oh. All right, guys, school's in session. Three branches of attack. Social media, advertising, boots on the fucking ground. Does that make sense? Branch number four, dirty work. You know what's better than a 24 hour film? A 24 day film, with a little bit of hacking we can get the requirements by mid-December. Wait, we're gonna be hacking- I don't know what you're talking about. You need to make some fundraising calls. It's getting there. We need to reshoot the bedroom scene. Stop. Just stop. Nobody cares. This movie is not gonna get you any votes. What you need to focus on now is hard money donors. Lenny, I'm gonna need you to reshoot the bedroom scene. I'm just a marketing intern. Step up! This is the real world! I don't want to... Cut! Cut. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, can you say it a bit more, uh, you know, uh, a bit... excitingly? Why would the president say this? I'll be back. 
Why am I wearing this? Who makes this kind of fuck up? I do not want to roar. It's don't. Roaring is something I don't want to do. Can you just read it as written? I really just don't think my character would say that. You've seen the pre-polling data. Delivery is at 7 p.m. tomorrow. I have a guy who can take the fall. That's all you need to know. Plausible deniability. I don't want to! Oh! I'm not gonna oh! 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 I don't care what y'all say. I don't feel like... Oh! And blowing the competition out of the water, this year's winner of the William & Mary 24 Speed Film Festival is... I'm going to be heard my way. I don't want to roar. And that's how you do the Granny Fanny dance. Thank you for watching this live stream club with me and my best friend, Chad. Actually, my name is Blake. I mean, it's not like anyone actually watches your channel anyway. So tomorrow is challenge day, where you can tell me in the comments what challenge you think I should do. Everyone is referencing some new one called hashtag summon Sunday. Ooh, that sounds fun. Which one's that? What's up, guys? It's your girl. It's time for the hashtag Summon Sunday Challenge. And if you're a true fan of horror, then this is for you. You saw it on TikTok. I'm bringing it to YouTube. So go to BuzzFeed and do the Which Demon Is Your Demon quiz. Follow my channel for tips on how to attract the demon meant for you. Looks like we have our challenge. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So I have everything prepared. Where did you get all this stuff? I am so glad you asked. Today's sponsor is Beelzebub's Bobbles. Order today and use code Summon Sunday to get 66.6% .6 off your first subscription. Isn't this a bit overkill? So make sure your dagger is 100% brass and not stainless steel. Is that real blood? A Greek loss in four weed a toss. Well, no demons today. Looks like Summon Sunday is overhyped. Hey guys, so I've gotten a lot of comments from you that I've dragged Blake into like something. But you know, we've had our disagreements, but he's fine! Anyway, so I have this new makeup routine that I'm so excited to share with you. <laughs> Hey guys, I just wanted to hop on here real quick because like, you know, a lot of you have reached out to me, so I wanted to make a fifth apology video. Um, you know, it really, really, really sucks how many people were hurt by the hashtag Summon Sunday challenge. It sucks for everybody. It sucks for me too because I'm getting a lot of hate for it and like, I don't think that's really fair. Um, because you know, I'm just a human person and it's not my fault that a demon like Pazuzu came into your life or whatever. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a human person. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to become more beautiful. And if you're trying to become more beautiful too, then check out my discount code below for my new makeup line. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. Hey guys. I brought a priest here to hopefully, you know, deal with our little Pazuzu problem. This house is in a state of evil. <laughs> That's what my parents say every time I post a new video, or at least they used to. <laughs> Everything needs to be cleansed. I really hope this works. Oh, it will. Also, you can follow me on TikTok at Hot Priest Nick. Ooh, great spirits. What do you need? Oh my gosh, me too! Ah! 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 Guys, Father Nick just got killed and I am so sad. This live stream is getting real. Talk about a crazy story.
Saturday. Have you guys ever considered, instead of looking outward for validation, look inward and Madison, Madison, please help. I'm gonna get so many followers for this. <laughs> Hey, sad ass. But why are you here? I came here hoping I would find some people just like me. Who'd you find? The Ladies' Book of Etiquette, Chapter 1, 
conversation. Never question the veracity of any statement made in general conversation. Avoid carefully every motion or gesture that will attract attention. When advancing an opinion, remember that your companion may be better informed upon the subject under discussion. Or where it is a mere matter of taste or feeling, do not expect that all the world will feel exactly as you do. Chapter 2. Dress The inconsistency and mental blindness of women are almost inconceivable. Now, my friend, you were very foolish to wear white skirts this day. But whilst insufficiency of clothing is to be deprecated, excessive wrapping up should also be avoided. Dear me, she looks delicate, poor thing. Chapter 3. Travelling If you find yourself, during your journey, in any awkward or embarrassing situation, request the assistance of a gentleman, and he will, probably, perform the service requested. Receive your thanks, and then relieve you of his presence. Stop! To clap your hands together is unladylike. Thanks, that was a quick save. To be truly polite, you must be polite at all times. The difficulties and trials of life have only just begun. Tomorrow, I agree. Yeah, it's that easy. We're gonna vote today, obviously. What other choice do we have? We have to wait because we don't have enough information yet. Information? What are you waiting on, man? We're waiting for the tides tomorrow to make a more informed. This is what you and the fucking tides, man. We just need to vote today, get it over with, all right? We've What's been... the rush? You know what has happened when we rush. Come on. Last time Mercury was in the wrong place, I think, that was more the issue than the time. And what do you know about planets? Come on, man, you're the one talking about tides like you know anything about anything. Well, you two have lost your vision. Well, you see, I mean, clearly the vision, vision, the rains, okay? Oh, oh, you know, the rains. Oh, we're out of control everything. Well, I think you just need to wake up and smell the roses there, bud. It's good to see you all again. Uh, that's really fun. Can you uh, help us with this, man? We're sort of having a pass. Look, need to vote today. No, tomorrow. Wait. These jokers want to wait until tomorrow. There, we, there's no reason we need to vote today. I can't keep eating this dry shit. Well, it's not you will keep eating, eating it until we vote tomorrow. No, no. 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 man. If we vote today, then we can get it passed where we are right now. We vote today or tomorrow. It's it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's so stale. We no. are not ready. Oh, we're we're not not fucking ready. ready. I'm going. Right. Right. Well, I feel caught between a tiger and a lion, and I don't want to roar, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get to this before the stain sets. What kind of an answer is that? Way to go, Igor, in decisiveness. I guess we're back to where we started. Uh, we're just gonna argue with the coral that. It's strawberries as well. No, 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 no. It's clearly a mango. What we're so lemon! Guys, guys, guys. We're just gonna vote. Tomorrow? We're not gonna decide for us? We're yeah, we're not gonna decide for us. 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 We're not gonna we're not prepared. We need to wait longer. Tomorrow and tomorrow. It's always tomorrow. Did you guys not see the tiebreaker? What are you talking about?
talking about? Just now, I we it. had a tiebreaker. So it's settled then. I don't see it. It's on the pier. No, I... No, I'm looking, I don't... Do you see the pier? I... Which pier? Do you know what a pier is? I'm a scientist, Greg. I know what a fucking pier is, okay? It's on... It is literally the only thing on the pier. Oh, the pier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. Yeah, I, I, know, I know what you're saying. What did you think I was saying? I... I thought... Look, it doesn't matter, okay? All right? It, it, look, I know what... I see... I'm on the same page. I know what a pier is. Did you say something? What? No, no, I'm talking to Greg's on the phone. What? Talking to Greg about the thing. What thing? About the fucking apocalypse that's happening right now, Karen. Okay? That's the difference since those lady hackers mess things up. Oh, apocalypse. Uh, there's deadly radiation everywhere, Karen. Okay, the president declared threat level ultra. If anyone goes outside, their dicks will explode. I think that's a fucking apocalypse, Karen. Anyone with a dick? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I just said. Anyone goes outside. Jesus. Is that Karen? Yeah. Oh, say hi for me. Greg says hi. What are you guys trying to do? <laughs> Congress dropped our fucking science box out on the wood thing on the lake. The pier? The, the pier, yeah. Did Karen say hi back? Do you want me to go get the box for you? Look, look Karen, I... Congress asked us specifically to do this, all right? I think we can handle it. Okay? Look, it's just... I don't have a dick, so if you wanted me to go get the box, I could go Karen, get the box. I feel like there's something you're not understanding about this. Like, they asked us to do it, so if you do it... It would be confusing, because then we have to explain okay, why we did fine. something different than fine. what you we were supposed okay. to do. Fine, okay? whatever. Can that, all right, thank you. What's that, Karen? Look, it's just that I can physically walk outside right now and get your fucking science box for you. Oh my god, Karen, can Greg and I just deal with this? Okay, thank you. I only have three Jesus fucking Christ. PhDs. I know how to get a goddamn box. Hey. Hey, bro! Hey! What's up, bro? Uh, did you get the box yet? Ugh, not yet, my main man. Guys, I'm getting the worst signal. Why don't you just come over here? Oh my god, Brian. The point is we can't go outside because our wieners will literally explode. Guys, did we... I don't... Fucking Brian, man. Brian is a fucking idiot. Alright, so how are we doing this? Well, obviously, we're going to have to come up with some sort of suit to protect ourselves. Right. Or we'll be as dead as Ronaldo in the 2008 film Max. Guys, I need a hey really bad signal. Hey -o. Did we get the box? Brian, it's been 30 goddamn seconds. Okay. Why don't you guys just come over here? Oh my god. Jesus Christ, Brian. Huh? What the shit is wrong with that guy? Brian is a fucking idiot. Hey guys, I'm outside. What the fuck? Brian? Jesus Christ, Brian! I wasn't getting very good reception inside. There's radiation everywhere, you dick! Huh, yeah, I mean, I... I feel alright. Well, just go! Go! You're already out! Go get the box! Oh, okay. It's a big wooden thing on the big wooden thing. Uh, the, the pier. It's called a box, dumbass! Go oh, get okay. it! Okay. I'll get in my car! I'll get in my car! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, go, go, go! Just go, just go, just go! Just go! I can see the box. Oh god, my dick is so hard right now! Shit. Oh shit. Oh, Anthony. Is that Brian? Yeah, his dick's probably gonna explode. If you want to survive, you have to cut off your dick. Do it now! Okay. You know I love you, darling. He's probably gonna bleed to death either way. I wish we could get to him. Oh my fucking god, I can go outside right now! Uh, if only. Fucking idiot.
Karen, it's too warm for a coat. Oh, fuck. Shit. Neil, you idiot! You opened your window! <sighs> yeah. God damn it. What a dumbass. All right, let's give a round of applause to our uh, filmmakers. Un unmuted round of applause, if you would. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Woo! Well done. Um, I hadn't seen exploding dicks before. That was <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so our first question for our panelists, and this is open to all of you, uh, how did you come up with the idea for your short? Let's see, Ben, because you're on my screen. Why don't we start with you? Okay. So we got the um, we got the genre loop, which you know you can interpret these genres just about any way you want and and make it make make something whatever it is. But um, we had just all these different ideas. Uh, and it was me and like four of my friends, uh, just sitting in my living room and we were just brainstorming for probably like four or five hours right after we got the, um, the assignment. And we realized that we were just talking in circles around each other and like none of the actual ideas that we were coming up with could be done in the amount of time that we had or with the stuff that we had. So then we just decided to run with that idea of just people just talking in circles and not being able to make any kind of a decision, which ended up working perfectly. Um, at one point, one of my friends, Sam, ended up playing the same song on repeat for <laughs> like, I, I think something like two hours and none of us really noticed because we were so caught up in the moment of just like trying to figure out how to make the loop work. Um, and then uh yeah the 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 real icing on the cake was deciding to just make it all all one shot and do a do an arc shot because that was the that was the required um camera movement for that year that was like an extra little bit of spice for the alumni yeah that was pretty awesome so is that actually all one take or are there any sort of cheated cuts in there there's the one cut at the end okay um like when you when, when it loops back around and starts over with the so it settled then line that's a cut but we what we ended up doing was um filming that we we had like a, a basic outline not really a script just kind of like people knew what they were supposed to say and we filmed it like three or four times in a row and then just used the best take of that one and then just repeated it in the beginning mm -hmm. very so, cool yeah aaron how did you come up with the concept for your movie um, I got the genre of feminist, and so we decided to make a film about periods because we're taught not to talk about them. <laughs> um, and then the it was supposed to be more like we filmed a bunch of weird footage of like red objects <laughs> and stuff. And then um, Alicia, my friend, who's the main person, like she looked really cool in black and white. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, at like three in the morning, I found this recording, <laughs> um, an old book in the public domain. So, um, it's probably against the rules, but whatever. It was three in the morning. <laughs> These are more like guidelines for the alumni. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was going to ask you, so where did you find that voiceover? So it was like a recording that you found for it? Yeah, the book is like um in the public domain and like in the because I think it was like a Victorian writer and the recording was like on some public domain website um 
And I went back and looked at the text and most of the lines are like pretty much exactly what is in the book. <laughs> I thought I edited it more, but it's really like ridiculous. <laughs> that actually makes it a really neat meta piece. So how did you do then the required line? Um, thanks, that was a quick save. Was that sort of that like Frank invited? Or did you yeah, record that? Yeah, that was the only really like spliced together one, which you can tell. <laughs> but it makes it, it's, a, it's sort of a neat um, sort of like found art combo I, I love that idea of the mashup of the recording with the visuals and then where did you find the song it was also on some like like free sound or like some public publicly available music site so yeah awesome <laughs> um sarah how about you um yeah so i actually uh like an hour before the story i was trying to remember like how i had the idea um, and I looked, but I have a little group me um, with the people, like, you know, my friends that do it. And I, I looked back and I had sent them the two options. One was buddy comedy and one was found footage, horror slash suspense. And I immediately didn't want to do the buddy comedy because I did that one as a genre back in like 2013. And so I, I didn't want to repeat. And then also just like, so at 618, my time, like right after I got the idea, I, was, I sent them a message saying, honestly, my first idea is the found footage one, maybe a TikTok challenge gone wrong with somebody in Pazuzu. <laughs> so I just immediately had a full fledged like thing. Just we just did this, and I will say we we made a movie um about I think four years ago now that was actually a serious film with Pazuzu, and so I think like I kind of always have like the demon idea like just like there, which I don't even like demon movies. I just it's a fun trope. Um, and then I also just like I don't know. I feel like influencer culture is just everywhere and inescapable, and I do not like that culture and that just was <laughs> really easy to um mock and I, I don't know I just love the idea of there is like just some demon challenge um and I like my friend Amelia I think she's just this great actress and she was just absolutely I like for all these movies I it, like since she's moved away it's usually just like I send her a script with no like direction or anything and then she just knows exactly what I'm going for and then just like so like she was the influencer who had the challenge in my movie um and I thought she just did I love because like I so I write the script but then she like embellishes a little bit and so she like added the like I love all of you so 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 much and like it was just, I don't know like I could not stop laughing just like at her part of the movie um but yeah I don't know I just uh I just love this world where everyone in my movie has a TikTok that they want to share even the priest so that that feels pa like painfully close to reality <laughs> these days <Yeah. laughs> um so when you said how so where where um I didn't realize so Amelia was actually doing all of her stuff remote from you. Yeah, so she she lives in Florida. I live in okay. uh, she's in Orlando. I am in Birmingham, um, and she moved away in like twenty nineteen. And so since then, everything that she's been doing with me, it's all like remote. Um, and I I still have uh, my boyfriend Gerald. So he's still I he's actually an engineer, and I just coerce him into doing the movie. So he was the one who's Pazuzu. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and he did not like the face makeup at all um but I think it's great and then um the other guy in the movie Blake uh Blake the redhead he's um a friend I met through a play um and so he's been a really fun addition to our cast of and my cast has slowly grown from just being like Amelia and Gerald and me and that's it <laughs> <laughs> um, having to play multiple roles like when we did a soap opera one like a few years ago it was Amelia and I playing like four characters um so it's 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 nice to have people who like doing movies now um, but yeah. And sorry, what was the name of that one where Pazuzu first showed up in your 24 speeds? Oh, that was a, that was for, um, the first Pazuzu movie I did was for Sidewalk, which is a local film. Okay. Movie. Yeah. And then actually, I think the, I guess you guys don't know it because it's the a whole other like thing, but like they kind of, I do feel like sometimes they influence each other, like, because I, so this, this contest was in April and it was like one week before the Sidewalk contest. And mm -hmm. when we did that one, um, we, we had to do a, um, enemies to lovers and because this movie was so fresh I did <laughs> influencers <laughs> enemies to lovers. it's not the same movie at all but it did involve influencers and I do feel like there's a lot of like not a lot but there's some overlap of like I had this idea I'm going to take this idea and kind of like completely turn around but like something similar about it like we just did influencers we do influencers again and um yeah well, I feel like it's like one way to hit your stride is when you're sort of playing with the same themes in like a movie because it, it's you can oftentimes find sort of new nuances new new like t takes on it Mm -hmm. coming at it from two different projects um speaking of working remotely zan do you want to talk about your movie uh sure yeah so uh i yeah i think uh 
I mean, I think the the inspiration behind NARS is that uh, dicks are funny, yeah, like dicks are funny. So we were like, well, that's that's kind of all we need to do. So that was that was most of it. But no, I think we got uh, we got disaster film as our uh, as our film, and uh, and so I think we were kind of tossing about. Th Thomas is also here, so he he might he might remember the more more of the specifics of it. I'm ninety percent sure the genesis of it was that we were because we yeah so we we all live thomas and Stephen and i all live in different places so we've been we always have to shoot a film that involves us all not being in the same place um and i have a standing mandate that i don't ever want to leave my apartment if it's february because <laughs> it's cold um so uh so i was like well that's what we got i'm 90 percent sure because we usually do like a call to figure out kind of the basic concept and then one of us writes it i'm pretty sure that what it was was the we were like oh, well what are all the different kinds of apocalypses and then one of us went like what if it like someone's it made people's dicks explode <laughs> and then we like laughed and i was like yeah and then that was that was just it but it was definitely a joke that was not supposed to be the entire film and then it was just the entire film but uh yeah i think ultimately what it was i think we we were just like i do remember us being like concerned that it was like like we added in, I remember when we submitted it, we added in like exploding dicks colon a satire because we were, <laughs> I remember we were worried that people would just like, would not really get what the joke was and would just think that we thought misogyny was funny, which is like, we, that's not what we thought. We think dicks are funny and we, in various ways. Uh, and, uh, and we were like, but I think the idea of like someone mansplaining during the apocalypse was funny to us. And that was the, that was the core of it. Um, but uh yeah, and we were way ahead of our time because uh, look what happened a couple years later. That was like 2017. And we did talk about doing a follow-up uh, in quarantine. I mean, we didn't do it, but um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that was, uh, yeah. And this was the shorter version, by the way. We, we wrote a solid like 10 page script that had like three extra characters in it, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then it got cut down. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, uh, I don't, Thomas, I don't know if you remember what the actual genesis of that was or if that, or if, or if that was it, but yeah. yeah I was just saying, if we've had any team members from any of the teams that want to chime in, uh, feel free to hop in too. Uh, my memory was that I, I was working, so I blame you for anything that happened in that movie. I was busy, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was on a, I was on a, oh, I mean, I'm down in New Orleans and I was on a Hallmark Christmas movie and I was staying in the house with the DP and I was I was the assistant editor on it. So I went to the DP and said, I need you to shoot me. Can you use like the camera that we're using for this Hallmark movie? And can you shoot me on a pier? My dick's about to explode. And well, just 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 film out the window. I'm going to go do some stuff. No, that's my memory of it. And he said, OK. <laughs> I also, but the other main thing that I remember about this is the fact that they at at the at the Global Film Fest this year they screened it before it was back when they would show the winning uh, or like maybe they showed all of it. I think maybe they showed all of them before various films in the film fest. And the only one they could show ours before was My Friend Dahmer, the Jeffrey Dahmer movie. Um, and Milan Chakraborty was there. I think it was his first year that he was there. Who was he? Had, he was there because he produced it. And uh, and he did not. He was not aware that they were going to show this film before the movie. And so uh, I think it was Kevin Smith. Uh, you know, was was introducing it, and he was like, "Oh yeah." So what what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna uh, we'll do the little introduction, and then we'll show a film about exploding penises, and then we'll show your film. And I was like, "Sorry, what? What was the middle? What was the middle part there?" Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was it. The rest is history. Uh, Matt. Uh, can you talk about the inspiration for yours? Yeah, uh, I am like trying to remember it. I remember us being in my apartment in Brooklyn, um, but like, I don't think I even remember the genre. <laughs> oh, it was a uh, uh, bad romance. Bad romance. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, definitely some Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the genres get weird. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, we had everyone there. It was like, it was me, it was Eric, and then Dana Hayes was also on that. Uh, and then some, friend of mine, some friends of mine who I worked with um, when I was in film in New York. And um, I, I don't remember exactly what brought us to this idea, but I remember really struggling. We were having a hard time coming up with um, 
with a real concept and a solid story. Um, and eventually we sort of were just like, okay, we have this really sort of weird idea. Um, and we're all sci-fi nerds. Uh, so how about clones? And Eric is a clone. And um, when the, the girl who we're seeing gets tired of this clone, she can go and get another. And they're all like kind of slightly different. Um, so it really became um, kind of less about the, the story than like wanting to accomplish some technical things. Like we were like, okay, well, how do we, how do we do four Eric's in a room together and then have them all look up at the same time? Um, and then how do we get this particular look, like how, I remember, I do, I remember a conversation where we were like, how bad can we make the red look? Um, like, <laughs> and that was like, just sort of like where some of these things came from, um, just like bump the ISO all the way up. What is that gonna do when we shine it right into bright lights? Um, so uh, yeah, it, it sort of just became, more about about that um because we really had a hard time with the story we really did so actually on that note how did you get that sort of dreamy blooming look with the lights uh well we bumped the iso <laughs> all the way <laughs> um, we were like how noisy can we make a red look um and then uh we put um uh some soft filters in front of the glass um i think we used good yeah i think we used schneider prime so we had we had decent <laughs> lenses on it uh, uh and then um uh and then i think we might have put a glimmer glass on for the shot outside of the hotel edison it's like we really wanted to like blow out the image um and uh and just see how how weird we could make it look and like see what would happen to the color of the camera if we just pushed it in four degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, it does uh, it cuts down on the overheating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what about the score? Uh, so that was me playing guitar and um, Blake, uh, a friend of mine who uh, shot, shot that piece uh, on piano. Um, and we just jammed as we watched the film over and over. Um, and we uh, just sort of went back and forth. Like I'd play one phrase on guitar and he'd play a phrase on piano and then we'd go over each other. We were basically like, okay, we're in a minor key. There's probably an A because that's always what I play in when I noodle around, I play in A minor, uh, A minor blues. And um, so we were just like, yeah, that's cool. Let's let's go with that. And then piece it together with phrases that that we like some were longer than others. No, I, I, I love both the, the look of that movie and just the soundtrack of it. I still think of it as like one of the coolest soundtracks we've ever had in a 24 speed film. Thank you. Um, Brian, are you on the call? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me all right? We can. We can. So um, what was the inspiration um, for, so, finding him? for finding him? Sure. Well, first I have a question is, and sorry if you've gone over this all already, who all is here? Are there actually people, non-experienced 24 speed people here or what is the demographic? Um, we've got a lot of people who are familiar. I think we've got a few people who are unfamiliar with 24 speed. Can I, can okay. I just like, can I just like, uh, Loretta, uh, you're on a Loretta, plane. You're on a plane. I, we've never I, met, we've but never that is so cool. Hi. Loretta's on a plane. Is it flying right now? The same thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Um, Loretta, you're on a plane. 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 You're
And somebody said, what if we make a Where's Waldo action movie? And so then for a while we were thinking about that, which is already like a strange idea. I don't know why they pitched that, but then we were going down that road for a while and I'm like, wait a minute. What if we just call Pratish and act like we didn't pick action movie? It's like, what if we do the Where's Waldo religious movie? And I actually think that's the definitely the best 24 speed I've written. Maybe the best film I've written <laughs> um, because it was like bullet points. OK, they're going to start out where they're doing this deed of worms. Uh, ecclesiastical council decide, you know, we, we've had all these schisms. We need to come together and we are going to talk today and figure out how to do that. And then their whole religion falls apart and it all ends with heaven's gate. <laughs> um, how hard but then also Waldo is real and <laughs> exists in the world. So a lot of ideas crammed into the four minutes or whatever it was. I Every time the deadline gets shortened down, it, I, I hurt because I know that we wouldn't have been able to fit it all in in this new shorter time span, but uh, limitation breeds creativity. How hard, so to, my, my how hard was it to find all the thoughts? How hard was it to find all the Where's Waldo books and Waldo, Waldo costumes? And Waldo costumes. So we just dug out any anybody who had a striped shirt. We dug those out. Um, I did. Odd Law needed to be a specific color, so that is literally just duct tape wrapped around a black shirt. Um, and then the hats obviously are a bunch of cat in a hat hats, which we I had those. <laughs> um, do you want do you want to talk, um, about, you, the you want to talk about the Gauntly Mobile? Gauntly Mobile. Sure. Was the Gauntly Mobile in the film? I don't think it is, but just thinking about because I, I have been privileged I, I enough, to see, privileged enough Mobile, to see the Gauntly Mobile, which is a oh, minivan is, filled with the, costumes, props. Costumes, props. Right. The point of the question is I have a lot of props and costumes on hand or close by a lot of the time. So I have like a probably the best example of this, if you want to see it, is um, the the animal one. The um, that was called Who Saved Who, our 2020 entry, which was right on the eve of the pandemic. It was like February 2020 or whatever. Um, but that one, it's like our genre was animals. And it's like, oh, well, I have a whole lot of animal hats in my car. So let's go. <laughs> Um, Loretta, are you, um, able, Loretta, to are you able to answer questions? I know you're on a plane. I am, but in like two minutes would be way better. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> we will wait till you are off the jetway. Um, hey, Ted, I yes. would say that Sharon Zuber is here. So while Loretta gets off the plane, uh, you know, the founder of 24 Speed, <laughs> maybe we could. Sharon, are sure, you absolutely. Hi, along with Adam Stackhouse and Zach. So I can't take all the credit, but I absolutely love this event. I am so proud of, I mean, over the years, all of the 24 speed filmmakers have just it, it so creative, so exciting. And I love this event. I hope you'll do more like this. And I also want to call out Ian Atkins was the one who gave us the idea. And he, it, he works in Charlottesville up your way, Zach. And, um, but he came back to William and Mary after he graduated and told us he had participated in this really cool event called mm, 70. Anyway, it was a three day 24 speed is what it was and how he nearly killed himself doing it. And I talked to Adam and you, and we decided there's no way we could do a 72 hour one, but we got it down to 24. And Zach, you are credited with the 24 frames per second, 24 speed idea for the title. So pretty exciting. Adam, what do you wanna add? I, you said it all. You said everything. That's all of it. You got it. You covered it. Great job. Thank you for all you do. It's lovely. 
I mean, I think it's really fun that this is um, this big after this many years <clears throat> since it was like starting in 2005. This is very rad to see everybody come together and talk about each other's work and the love is real. Um, so I'm just very happy that this exists. Oh, there's Sharon. <laughs> yeah, so, thank it's you great for seeing you. Oh, Loretta, we, we were stalling for you, Loretta, by talking about the old times. Hello. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see everybody. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. <laughs> so, Loretta, what was the inspiration behind 24 to Life, the political film? Um, the previous year, I, th I think I was one of the uh, impromptu judges, and um, the cheating seemed kind of blatant. I won't call out Brian, but it might have been his film. <laughs> 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 uh, like, there were more votes than there were people um, online watching. And I believe, so, yeah, I believe that was the first year that we did online voting, which yeah. uh, we quickly realized had some vulnerabilities. Yeah. <laughs> realized vulnerabilities. That was a proof of concept. I, I lay no claim to that award. I was merely demonstrating the fallibility of the system. Um, is my sound okay? I'm sorry if it's weird. No, you're sounding uh, great. Okay, great. Um, so we thought we'd do something funny about that. Probably like most 24 uh, uh, hour films, you know, if we just had a little more time, it would have made sense. <laughs> I'm afraid that one like possibly was not understandable by viewers quite <laughs> because of the uh, rush at the end. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That was kind of it. We filmed it in my apartment. Um, it was theoretically Jamie Northup and I both doing it. And it was a bunch of his like stunt friends. I don't think we had any stunts <laughs> since I've seen it though. You did have a man um, take the fall multiple times. I see, yeah, I see. <laughs> So that's kind of it. But then I think also Jamie hacked the system that year and um, we we won if the votes were counted after voting closed. <laughs> um, so I don't think we helped. I think we didn't help based on our actions. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, it sounds like you may have answered this, but where did you find all your teammates? Um, our, our star Amanda was my dog walker. And I think everyone else came through Jamie. I think a couple of like, Jamie's stunt friends also, also wanted to act in films. And I'm sorry, this was the opportunity we gave them. And did you actually film most of that one during the day? Or when did you, because I think there's a lot think of daytime so. shots. There's a lot of daytime and um, the lighting in my house just looked pretty. Like we didn't do, we yeah. got big windows. We don't think we did any lighting. So that was nice. All right. So let's open this up to questions from the audience. Um, you want to either raise your hand, unmute your mic or post it in the chat, we'll be happy to answer them. I have a question. Oh, wait, was I supposed to raise my hand? Now nah, you're good. Oh, my question is, when is when is this gonna end? Because Zan and Steven and I talk about it, we're, like, we're just gonna keep doing this till we're dead. Like, so it's not, it's not gonna end, right? Yeah, I was uh, saying that earlier. We're just gonna keep doing it until we die. Not, not if we can help it. I mean, I think it's uh, it's till the end of the earth, and if we make it to Mars, maybe longer. Yeah, there's too much momentum at this point. It's not, it's not over ever. Well, we're hoping that yeah, we keep building the layers upon layers where things start to reference each other and creating this sort of mountain of content and art that has to be continually replaced. I mean, I know for me, I think a big part of it is just the sense of community. And that's one of the things I like about filmmaking in general is you kind of do it with a crowd. Sarah, you talked about this, with like how this is a way to stay connected with friends and um, see people and just get together and you collaborate on making something. But I would also like to tie that into a question for everybody. What does keep you coming back for 24 Speed? So like Aaron, let's go with you. It's like par partially because it's like one of the things that makes me proudest during the year. <laughs> it's like a really nice feeling to have made something. It's like the, in the final hours, you're like, oh my God, there's no way I'm ever going to finish this. I'm like, this is so embarrassing. I'm not going to have anything to submit this year. <laughs> and like, it's a really great feeling after. Um, and because I have like my day job doesn't have anything to do with them and I like kind of miss that so it's, it's good to um you know practice <laughs> those skills every year um yeah and then it's always fun 
um, like Brian Bolt, who was my teammate senior year of college, like the first year that I did it, um, we like, you know, call each other throughout <laughs> the process. So we're like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> like, <laughs> was uh, was your first one the uh, the love safari? Yeah. <laughs> was that your first ever twenty four speed? That's my favorite twenty four speed. So. Oh yeah. Just so yeah, you know. Yeah. That's my favorite thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh yeah. Um, for also sort of open to any of the panelists, how did you get started in filmmaking in general? I was just going to answer the previous question. Oh, yeah, sure. Just Please. like, there's not that many art projects I do like outside of money. And it's a good, like, <laughs> it's it's so funny when that happens, right? Or like when you come together with a group of people and try really hard to do something. So it's just a good, I don't know, excuse <laughs> to do that in a weird way that I'm grateful for. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's a, it's like a, uh, like, it's something to like, get you out of your head in terms of like overthinking editing and shooting and all that stuff that's just like all right well we're gonna turn something in in a day and if you know and there's no stakes and it doesn't matter and it might be 36 hours but who cares it's just a fun thing to do but it's like either way you get to know that it's like oh I produced a thing in this weekend and it makes you feel good and uh and it makes you stop overthinking things because I like I always overthink everything that I do and it's nice to have a deadline to just be like no just turn it in just it doesn't matter turn it in so that's what I love about it well I mean considering that you're saying we don't overthink it we do argue a lot uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we argue a lot and we still overthink like, it but we have to turn it in yeah I do this extremely absurd thing when we can do this extremely absurd thing and then we yell at each other yeah you remember when yeah, I first we did what? Well, there's that one time I was visiting you in uh, DC, and my girlfriend turned to your girlfriend and was like, Are they always like this when they do 24 speed? It was her tw first 24 speed. And Abigail just nodded slowly and looked depressed. Yeah, I think that was a discussion about whether or not I could be uh, believable as a live human baby um, when I was a 27 year old bearded man. And uh, we were. Like it's it, it's like it feels like we're joking about the fact that we were like screaming at each other about this. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, we get we get heated, but it's all in the name of twenty four speed. Well, can I was say kind of go back to what Aaron was saying. Like as someone who like this isn't necessarily my like job, it's it's super easy to justify doing it because it's like such you know it's a finite amount of time. Like whereas like I would like to make short films that are you know take longer than a weekend to do but it's hard to like plan when that's going to be or this is like okay I know this is going to be in this specific month just me one weekend and it's like easy to convince myself as well as my friends to do it um and also to know too that like unlike films I could just do on my own it's like I know people are going to be forced to watch this like, there's going to be <laughs> there's going to be someone has to watch this it's not just going to be me um so there's that it's like built an audience um and then also it's kind of like I don't know the like I'm one of the worst people about like laughing at my own jokes and so it's nice to have something like concrete made and I can go back five years later and just like laugh at my own movie but it's nice to have that it's there it's made don't ever don't ever feel bad about that that's all that's all we do yeah I was actually hi I'm Amelia I'm the Florida, Florida. I send in my videos, my videos. <laughs> Sarah um I was gonna um, say, I was that. say that we really enjoy our own private like inside jokes from our films that we've made together. And it kind of like, you know, we talked about how we keep in touch through this and it's kind of like, that's how our friend group stays together. We make our little jokes about all the films we've made. So it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, we're constantly quoting we're constantly our movies, quoting and, like, our movies and, like, and like no one else gets it. No one else gets it, but uh, that's fine. We just constantly quote them. um brian how did what keeps saying how did what keeps coming back oh well i was gonna say i think you guys should put someone will be forced to watch this on the marketing material <laughs> i think that's a key part of the appeal that people need to know about um i mean it, it freezes the moment in time it's like the years pass so quickly once once college is done and now we can, I mean, we have a specific memory associated with something we made each year. 
and yeah what people have said that you know at the end of 24 hours you're going to have something to show for it for for what that's worth so that's really it for me then yeah, I, it, it serves as like a as like a time capsule it flavors the rest of the year going forward and uh i mean specifically like i've done it with my band every year pretty much and one year like we were all in different uh countries one year like um we had all moved to different places and some people like came back and we all got back together um but yeah i i totally agree with with brian and with the sentiments of everyone else that like it it really freezes the moment in time So on a different note, um, one of my favorite questions to ask filmmakers when we have Q and A's like this is, "What is you?" Because so much of filmmaking is editing, and so much of what we do doesn't actually end up in the final movie. What is your favorite thing from your short or from another twenty-four speed that you made that didn't make it into the final movie? And Matt, let's start with you. <clears throat> oh my God. Uh... Um, you know, I'm going to be really unhelpful here because, uh, uh, to, so to the last question, mm -hmm. I haven't kept coming back. Um, and that's because I've, I, 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 I'm in, I'm in live theater now. Um, I really made these films when I was in Brooklyn and, uh, I moved to Princeton um, in 2016, uh, and didn't have a team to really work with there. And so, so this was the last one that I did that like was my kind of team. And I think it, it was, I mean, Ted, you probably know better than me, but I want to say like 14 or 15, uh, I think 14, um, uh, 2016, man, 16, really that way. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, oh yeah. I remember like driving back really, really, really tired. Um, so I, I, so it is hard for me to remember what didn't actually make it mm -hmm. because it's so long ago. Um, but, uh, I think like to the, to the idea of like making these things because you have such limited time, like I, maybe part of it, it like part of why i can't remember something that didn't make it in is because you don't have time to shoot a scene that you're not sure if you're gonna use like you just everything that you do has to count uh because if it doesn't you're losing like the few minutes that maybe you can sleep or you're losing <laughs> a little more time in post um so it's a big sacrifice if you put a lot of energy in to something and then like go you know what let's not use this scene um but i don't know that's just me zan wrote a, a 10 page script of exploding dicks so yeah so zan what was your what was your favorite joke that got cut from exploding dicks exploding dicks Oh, hold on. I think Ben, ben oh. was about to, he was key enough to say something. My bad. Well, I, I really, I, I really, I, I would love to read the entire script for Exploding Dicks, uh, the entire 10 page script, if, if it still exists somewhere. Um, but, uh, for the circle as a trap before we decided to turn it into just one big arc shot, we have, we had this whole like cult arc where like they were going to be trapped in the basement and someone was going to be coming and like checking on them and bringing them food and like torturing them. And then we ended up deciding to make it slightly less dark. So you can still infer that maybe they're trapped in the basement by a deadly cult or something, but yeah, that didn't make it in. Something that did make it into one of my films that probably shouldn't have is we filled an entire bathtub up with coffee and we had one of my friends take a bath in it and then poured a gallon of milk on his face 
and uh yeah he still he still says he like sometimes has nightmares about that <laughs> so yeah we should also know when also to stop. know when to stop <laughs> Just, I just, have a yeah, just cut yeah. scene dimension, if that's all right. I don't sure. want to jump sure. in, but okay. Uh, I probably answered this question on a previous occasion, but uh, for the Waldo film, there was a, a subplot, an extra subplot with Odd Lot that got cut. And he's out on the porch outside the meeting, just hanging around, smoking a striped cigarillo. And it's funny, I think it would have been funny because he's ends up being the only one who survives the massacre because he wasn't there. So I, I think cutting back to him at the end would have been funny. Yeah, and I will say, I mean, yeah, so we, there is a 10 page script of Exploding Dicks, but uh, it was, uh, well, I think, it, yeah, we didn't shoot all of it. The original one, I think it had a couple extra characters that we, we thought we had actors then we didn't. So we were just like, we'll just cut all that. Um, and then I think, I think the main stuff that we cut was just that, I think the requirement that year, or there was, I can't remember if it was the main one or, or like an extra one that there was a requirement that you had to reference a, a previous 24 speed film, like in some, in some way. And so I feel like this is most of the stuff that usually gets cut from ours. We just wrote, like eight or nine references to, to previous 24. So it was like every page had us referencing some other pre previous 24 speed film, uh, just just to just to be absurd with it. And then we were like, this is funny to us to just constantly reference these other stupid films from 10 years ago, uh, but it, did, it didn't make any sense. So we, I think we shot a bunch of those and then cut them. But apart from that, I don't think we actually shot most of that script. But uh, yeah, I think it is funny though that like like hearing Brian and and Matt and everyone say like, oh, well, it's like, you don't have time to shoot it. And like, you know, you've only got four minutes, you know, or three minutes for the, the total runtime. And it's just like, I think it's funny because we've never talked to, like, we, I feel like we're always just like, we'll take as much time as we need. And, uh, and then we're just gonna turn in something. And the beautiful thing is, as Sarah said, uh, someone's gonna be forced to watch it. That's the great thing. If you turn in a three minute movie or a 10 minute movie, they still have to show it. Someone still has to watch it. And that's what's great about it. Well, I was gonna keep piggybacking on Zan's answers, but yeah, I mean, like we, we've, got, we've gone over the time limit like every year for 10 years. So we really shouldn't have been allowed back a decade ago, but here we are. So we don't cut anything. We just turn in a seven minute, eight minute movie and we, we film in different places and then it'll be somebody's year and we'll send all of our footage to that one person and and they edit it so whenever i edit it what i get is i get zan reading the script and then him improvising on the script and i just get takes that are like 20 minutes long of zan just making up lines and i have to go through all this shit and it takes me a really long time and that's part of the reason why they don't get turned in on time because zan's just making things up that are in the script I have to watch all of it. So there's a lot of stuff of Zan that doesn't end up in the movie because it's just him thinking he's really clever and he won't stop talking. There was a, you yeah. You really that, do argue a lot, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we argue. Well, see, this is the thing. I'll record this stuff knowing that it's going to make Thomas angry, um, but it's but that's part of the charm of it. But no, I realized there was one in the, in the uh, yeah, the, the uh, we made a film where I was a fighter pilot and uh, and I recorded a, I recorded a whole other plot line that I wanted Thomas to put in, but I didn't tell him this until I sent him the footage. That was just me throughout the entire film, constantly radioing in, trying to get three cheers for for me for for doing something. So I just but recorded we, a bunch of lines of me being like, "Can we get a can we get th three cheers there?" Yeah, it took a really long time to upload. We had to upload all of it. I had to download perfect. all of it. I mean, you perfect. added like several gigs to every clip because you kept yeah. talking. Yeah, it's worth it. That's uh, we may want to mention uh i think we're gonna there's sort of an official ending at 10 30 um but i think if if people still desire we can continue the conversation but ted do you may we try to open it up to anyone of the audience who's who's here and might want to ask a question absolutely any any questions from our audience 
is it okay if I go ahead and start talking? I don't Absolutely. Know. Yeah, yeah. Hop okay. In. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Chloe. Um, I just graduated in December of 2021, um, and I didn't get the chance to do the 24 speed, but I'm really looking forward to doing it as an alumni. Um, a question I had was, I know um, Zan and Thomas, you guys were talking about kind of breaking it up. How how does everyone work within their team, especially when they have teams that have, um, you know, like people with multiple like ways, like they could be a screenwriter, they could be an editor. Like, how do you break up the work and like change it from year to year? Do you have like a system? I'm gonna go and answer this first, just cause like the running joke for my group is that I do almost everything. Like I am the editor, director, writer, usually actress, and it's a lot, um, it's exhausting. And I think over the years, I mean, like my friends have tried to like, you know, do more on there, but it's it's mostly me. Um, and not to not to sound egotistical or anything. I, I don't mean it that way. It's just more that like it's it's a lot for one person. And I do get jealous of the groups that have like an assigned editor or like an assigned, you know, like person to do the lighting. Um, but I don't know, I mean, it's doable though. Like it's doable doing it all yourself. And I, I have gotten a lot more help like with the writing part. Like, I write it, but then I've gotten a lot more like we have a little brainstorm group and they help me edit it. And I've gotten a lot better at. Um, it used to be that like it'd be really long and I'd have to cut things on the editing room floor. And then now it's gotten better at like editing beforehand. Um before like before, so I don't have to waste my time filming and then editing it later. I will say actually, real quick to answer the question before about like some new cut. In our film, you know, we had the um priest Nick. I actually wrote uh, his twin brother, the shaman Rick. And I was like so in love with that idea that these twin brothers are both trying and both end up dead, and they're both trying to help <laughs> um help uh, in their own way, help uh, dispel the spirits in the house. And I had to cut that because some of us like to try to stay close to the time. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, it got cut, it's fine. It came out good, I think, so. Uh, I'll answer that question. Um, I've done a 24 speed for something different and that team was very well organized and they had the writers stay up all night and come up with the idea while the rest of us slept. And then we got up and shot it. And then, you know, you send the footage as you go to the editor and he edits as you go. Um, I have never done that for this. And similarly to, I guess, Chloe, like, yeah, it's often like driven by one person who wants to do it. So it's always been me like late up at night, still editing. It's not, not the recommended way. <laughs> it's been my experience. It's been my of, like, experience uh, of, like, uh, oh, um, that, people will sometimes say that they want to do it in the beginning and then like they'll be in like one or two scenes or something and then they'll get like tired and, and kind of like bail a little bit but it kind of ends up ebbing and flowing in a really interesting way if you have like a core group that really wants to do it but um if if you're the one who's like leading it then I think you should always be prepared to like see it through to the end is kind of how this thing works um but then also having a core team to like split up duties is really useful. Like a lot of times um, if someone didn't want to like stay up all night, we would just be like, okay, can you make the soundtrack then? Or like, can you like make some graphics for us or like just do something in this 24 hour period you can send to us and we can toss in there. And that ends up being really, really cool and fun and collaborative. Yeah, I've, I've had it vary from teams of like 10 people to it literally being just me. And uh, so division of labor is kind of all over the place, but I, I guess I agree with what everybody said. Um, I've, I've experienced it in a variety of combinations, some with designated roles. Uh, Kay Haley has served as the camera person a lot. Um, I like to be the writer director but uh, it shifts. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like I feel like we generally just flip around who ends up doing what. Like usually one one of us will end up writing the first, you know, draft. I think Exploding Dicks, I did the first pass on the script and sent it to Thomas and Steven. And then uh, someone else ended up, or maybe I, I can't remember who ended up finally editing, but usually it's like, one person does the first pass on the script, another person will end up, you know, doing the edit, but they kind of switch, you know, switches off each year, depending on kind of how much energy we have. I think generally, I feel like there's just, uh, there's, 
you can tell in the first meeting who wants to stay up all night and who doesn't. And it's just like, all right, okay, so you do that. And then I'll just do some other stuff later on. Um, but I mean, I feel like it's nice to have just a, a few people. It really does help to have a few people who were committed to being involved in some fashion for the full day rather than being like, I'm gonna do this all by myself. And then I've got a bunch of people who were like, yeah, that would be cool. But you know that they're gonna like be there for a couple hours and then go, I gotta go to bed, you know? Um, so that really does help. It does help to not have it's, to work around that. It's never Steven. It's, it's never Steven. Steven. It's never Steven. Yeah, sometimes Steven yeah, doesn't sometimes Steven. at all, but yeah. Um, I think uh, um, your, your team, if you are fortunate enough to have a team, oftentimes like those dynamics sort of work themselves out pretty naturally. Like someone is the fastest editor um and that person just winds up being the editor um uh if you are leading the team i think folks will look to you to lead um and and in our context that usually means directing you know driving the um the narrative um so and that i think is just something to always consider and then um uh, to build on Zan's point about like commitment to the day, um, things always take longer than you expect they will. And so like, it would be great if you could tell your actors, don't worry, you don't have to be up all night. I only need you for these three hours. I, I guarantee you those three hours have a high likelihood of becoming six or eight or 10. Um, so, uh, really try and, and manage those expectations when you're putting your team together um, because that is the difference between uh, keeping the friendship and not or at least uh, building a team of frequent collaborators. Eric and I argue constantly when we do things. I'll just quickly add that from what I could tell the most of you all seem to have a recurring cast of characters that I recognize from the various films. So it does seem like if you can survive like your first 24 speed with a few people, I think it is become something that's easier to sort of come back to. Um, and it's certainly great if you can kind of have a team that you kind of can can revisit year after year. I actually say to that point, like for me, the irony is like when I was actually at Women Mary, like I had to like beg and barter with my friends to be in it. And it was like pulling teeth and they were honestly kind of horrible. I'm no longer friends with most of them. <laughs> um, but since I like came back to Birmingham, like my friends have been a lot more supportive here. It's so, like, I'm the only one who like went to a marry of the people in my films, um, but they're just a lot more like, oh yeah, sure. Let's like do this contest and this is fun. And um, even though they don't have like the same connection to the school that I do. funny I have like sort of an opposite experience where like like now like I'm at I'm at Yale drama I have acting students in my cohort who will win Oscars in a few years but try and get them to do anything creative outside of class and they're like no this is this is my time now Aaron how about you how does the uh, division of labor usually work on your team um, it kind of depends. Most of the time, I live in Houston, so it's I don't have a lot of like William and Mary people <laughs> around that are like, oh yeah, I'll stay up like twenty four hours for this thing, like that you don't really win prizes for. <laughs> um, and so I normally end up like roping in. I think most of my friends have been involved <laughs> in like various years, um, and it's always crazy <laughs> but yeah it just kind of um I'm just like hey do you want to do this weird like thing <laughs> and just try and like get people excited about it but yeah I end up um except for one year that Brian Bolt and I did like a reunion um and then that was cool because we divided up like the editing more um but yeah Normally I'm like the editor and then I just get whoever is interested to like help 
plan out the thing. Do you also usually film your movies? Yeah. So like this past year, I think it was just it was just me <laughs> doing everything. Like Brian said, sometimes you have a team and sometimes it's just you. <laughs> and you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it requires being multi-talented. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, it's 10, 10, almost 10.30, 10, 10.29. 10, do you want to see if there's one question to fit in or officially? I was to say, let's let's kick to the honesty. There's we've got probably time for one last question if anybody has them. All right, if we don't, going once, going twice. I've got one lightning round question. Each team, one sentence. Where does your team name come from? It's it, Talk to Plants is the the name of the psychedelic rock band that we started at William and Mary, and we just always did it as a band. And I don't even know where that name came from. I think that one of like our guitarist and other singer just came up to us and was like, "We're going to be called Talk to Plants." <laughs> I've seen people wearing shirts that say "Talk to Plants, Not Cops," and I think that's pretty great. But uh, <laughs> who, who knows? <laughs> Brian, how about, oops, sorry, go ahead. So I just want, we know, sorry. I, I was gonna say ours is, uh, we started doing trivia at like local bars since like 2015. And around that time we were kind of ironically watching um, a Family Feud. Uh, and uh, there was a really much commercial that featured a woman like, we're going to play Steve. Um, and ever since then, like for trivia slash for film contests, I always use we're going to play Steve. Brian, how about you? Yeah, mine's pretty self-evident. My last name is Terrell, so Terrillionaires because my vanity is boundless. <laughs> Loretta, um, I don't I don't remember which what name we did for this project, <laughs> but I always have a different group, so I think we just try to make it funny based on the people involved. <laughs> Zan, how about you? Um, we made uh, the first film that we made together was called Bring Back the Box, and there was a line in it where uh, one of the characters says. Uh, uh, I suggest you get a part-time job and then my character says, I'd rather have a part-time box. And it, it wasn't a funny joke then, but we uh, decided to stick with it for 15 years. So, <laughs> um, Aaron, how about you? Um, I think one of my teammates, uh, like the first year I did a lot of my 24 speed, we were just like, what should our team name be? <laughs> she was like, backseat driver and I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> we were just like I don't know what it should be <laughs> it was random and then stuck <laughs> Matt how about you uh when I was um from when I was born until I was five years old when I lived in Queens um we were in apartment 4b very cool well, thank you everybody so much for coming out to this. Um, we also have a few thanks to share. I wanna thank Professor Zuber and Adam Stackhouse for creating 24 Speed and thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you, Adam and Liz for um, your support and all that you do for the Ampersand Film Festival. Um, we wanna thank the William & Mary Alumni Association for featuring us in Hark for this event. Um, and that was a really awesome signal boost to get. And I wanna thank Alana Wildermuth who does the William & Mary Alumni film industry newsletter. And I also really, really want to thank Zach Kiefer for pushing us to do this event and generally really working hard to keep the Alumni 24 Speed community going. Um, I really appreciate all that you do to keep this a, a thriving community. Um, and on that note, if you want to stay connected to this community, we actually have a listserv for Alumni 24 Speed. And I'm going to put the link in the chat here. Um, we'll actually be doing another one of these events. Um, it's an interview with the creators of the very first 24 speed film in 2005. It was called Win, Lose, or Draw. And so that's a conversation with Tom, Nate, and Gustav. Um, the first 24 speed that will be happening on November 2nd at 10 p.m. It'll be a Zoom meeting like this. And if you sign up for the listserv, we'll connect you when all that is ready to go out. Um, Zach, any final thoughts? Thanks y'all for coming. Um, and well, that is the first winning 24 speed. First winning 24 speed. Thank you. Yeah. There were three others. <laughs>
that did not win. But no, thank you everyone for coming out. Uh, we hope to get your contact on the listserv if you're interested to see some more events. Because uh, yeah, we've got, I think, another another one planned leading into the actual competition. Uh, I think we just heard the dates, but I think that all those details will come out later, but we'll make sure to make sure all that information certainly is out there so that people know how to participate in the, the competition if they are able to. And yeah, I guess we may hang on if anybody wants to, to stay talking and we'll hope to, to maybe follow up with some of you too, just to see how the event went and maybe what other events people might be interested in, you know, that is useful for this community and for the competition and just trying to build, you know, more support and participation around it. So, but yeah, yeah. big thanks to everyone for, for attending. This was a huge success.